In my last video, I looked back at some iconic Flash games and absolutely tortured myself trying to use Godot and failed miserably. So instead, I thought I'd torture myself with Unreal Engine and remake Storm the House, an absolutely classic game from this era where the aim is to stop oncoming stickmen that are trying to destroy your base. You play it as a sniper overlooking the land and with the use of various weapons as well as the assistance from hired gunmen and sentries, stop these attackers to make it through another day. Between each assault, you can spend your money that you've earned on new upgrades, soldiers and repairs. The first game in the series had a very simple design, with the only upgrades available being simple health, damage or ammo capacity, with the only exception being the missile silo and workers, which bombarded the enemies with explosive rounds to deal even more damage. While it was great for the time, the lack of choice is what makes the gameplay very plain and simple. The sequel, however, added quite a few improvements to make the gameplay a bit more engaging. The first thing you see as soon as you launch the game is a difficulty setting, which I believe just tweaks the spawn rate and the health of the enemies. Jumping into the game, however, you might notice that the gameplay is exactly the same. The second game was just built on top of the first one and didn't really change anything about the core game, but it's when you get to the shop that you can see all the new additions. As well as offering upgrades found in the first game, there's now a variety of guns to buy from, from the dual pistols all the way to the gravity gun and old glory. Each weapon has its own unique interaction, such as the shotgun reloading one shell at a time, or the grenade launcher firing explosive rounds that take a bit of time to land. Storm the House 3 was a true sequel, with refined gameplay, a cleaner look, plenty of new weapon types, a massive expansion of the tower system, as well as a few different game modes, which gives it a lot more replayability than the previous two. The weapon variety in this version sets it apart from the others, with unique weaponry such as the flamethrower burns enemies, the chainsaw which can be swung around violently, or the orbital laser which disintegrates everything in its proximity. Each weapon comes with its own set of upgrades to improve it even further, instead of having the generic clip size increase and the towers also have their own set of upgrades, like improving the shield generator's capacity or the flamer's range. Overall, this is a great example of progression in the game's development, improving at each point while still keeping the same core gameplay, which hopefully I can faithfully recreate in my own project. So let's get started. To start with this project, I'm going to use one of the lovely pre-made templates Unreal offers, and the FPS template is the closest to what I'm going to need. It's going to need a fair bit of modification to get what I need, but I think this is a bit easier than starting fresh. I'm also going to need some 3D models and assets as other people can make them a lot nicer than I can. And over the years, I've amassed a collection of assets and things like Humble Bundle. So I took a browse through them and among others, I'm going to be using everyone's favorite asset packs, Cinti Studios Low Poly Packs. If you've ever scrolled through any game dev subreddits, you'll be very familiar with these. I don't need every asset from these packs, so it was time to get trimming. And trust me when I say this took a long fucking Ooh. time. So long, in fact, that the Unreal's progress bar is now permanently burned into my vision. And if you have thousands and thousands of models, the engine has a tendency to crash any time you try to move or delete them, which was just... Uh... But after getting all that done, here's a little scene of some of the props I plan to use for this project. I've got a few models here for the enemies, as well as the base workers, some weaponry for the player and enemies to use, a few buildings for the base, scenery, as well as some random stuff I found that might get chucked about the place if I feel like it. So with all that finally done, let's get to making a game. The first section I'm going to develop for this project is the player controller for aiming and shooting. The template comes with all the shooting and weapons completed, so I thought that it would be quite easy to modify. But it turns out you can't really change anything about this system. Because they're C++ files, and I do not plan on touching that, I'm just going to make my own blueprint classes instead, which I have a little experience in from uni, but not a whole lot. Unlike a normal FPS controller for the player, the camera should be static and the gun should rotate independently towards the crosshair. To get the angle it should rotate to, I need to get the cursor's screen position, cast a ray down to the ground, get the point that it collides with, and then rotate the gun's angle to that point. So the only problem is, I have no idea how any of this works. Luckily, these features aren't new ideas, and Unreal already has nodes for exactly this problem. The first useful node is get hit result under cursor by channel, which is basically a function that takes the cursor's viewport position, converts it to the world position, fires array, and outputs the hit result. And it's all nicely wrapped into a single node. I then use the break hit result 
to get the impact point of the ray and fed this into the find look at rotation with the player's rotation point being the start location. This rotation is then used to set the rotation points rotation, 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 and achieve the result I'm looking for rotation. The player can now aim down at the ground with the mouse. The only issue is if they're looking at the sky, it completely breaks as the ray will never have an impact point. I fixed this issue with a very big brain move by sticking up a massive invisible wall at the edge of the map. Now, if the player is looking past the area, it just collides with that instead, rotates as normal, and the player won't be able to see any weird or janky behaviour. It's kind of deflating, staring at an empty map when developing, as it never seems like you're making any progress. So I started with the basic layout and design of the area. Using a variety of the props in the packs, I placed down the main base on one side of the map, with some basic barriers and items, and on the other side, a few tents, which would be where the enemies spawn from. I also added a random road and bridge to start the structure of the area. It still needs a lot of work in making it look less like an empty void and more city-like, but for now, it'll do for testing, and I'll probably be adding some props to it throughout development, so you should see it evolve over the course of this project. Now, back to the gameplay, and during the day, enemies randomly spawn from the left-hand side of the screen. They run towards the base, and then attack. So first things first, it's back to Google to see how instantiating objects works in this engine. A few moments later. So it turns out, yet again, the Unreal Engine has a pre-made node for exactly this feature. It's almost like they knew what game developers needed. All you have to do is call a spawn actor node with a position, choose a class from the drop-down to spawn, and then it'll just spawn. Simple as that. And you can use the actor output to call functions to. In my case, I use a setup function to give it some info. For now, this is just the reference to the wall, so it knows where to attack. To get the enemies to move, I set up a nav mesh to basically do it all for me. And this was one aspect that brought up a weird issue I kept having with Unreal Engine. Basically, every time I tried to implement something, it doesn't work even though I seemingly followed the documentation step by step. I keep doing it and search for any obscure setting that might be stopping it, but I don't find any reason as to why it wasn't working. Eventually, I just deleted it all, made a test scene where I did the exact same thing, and suddenly it worked. Not being able to get it working was frustrating, but getting it working without actually knowing what I did to fix it is just even worse. But I can't complain now, they move. All I had to do was use the target given to the enemies on spawn and move towards it, and it looks very nice. For now they all gather at the centre of the wall, but instead I'll need to give them the closest point from their start, but I assume that won't be too hard. One thing that was a massive pain in the ass for me was the animations. Getting these to work somewhat well enough was very annoying and it took me basically an entire day to understand what was going wrong and vaguely how to fix it. I'm using a site called Mixamo to get animations, and with it you can upload a model which automatically rigs the animations to the model and they all work well. The only issue was, the model I was uploading, one of the templates Cinti actually provides for Mixamo, wasn't designed for Unreal, which led to the animations not lining up properly, and were designed for a skeleton with different named bones. That's literally all it was. In Unreal, it was expecting one bone to be called Pelvis, but in the animation it was hips and so on. I searched for ages to find a nice way to do this, but eventually found a Cinti asset that was actually for Unreal, uploaded it, and it actually worked. Another issue I kept coming up against was every time I would try the animations with a different skeleton, I think it kept trying to add these bones and overwrite them, which then made the animation clip completely useless to me, and I just would download it again. This was absolutely user error, at least to some degree, but it works now. Only after getting all this done did I realise that the animation clips I had suffered to get in place weren't actually that good for me. You see, the movement based animations, so walking and running, move the root bone with them instead of just moving on the spot. Which means if I try to move the player while it's also playing this animation, they'll walk forward twice and then snap back when the clip loops, which just looks terrible. And with more research, I had two options. One was to find new animation clips, which I just wasn't going to suffer through again. And the second was just locking the root motion for the clip, which does cause some weirdness to the hip movement, but it looks perfectly fine from a distance. So I'm not going to mess about with this any further. I'm happy with the result. To get the enemies to attack, I'm going to be using the animations I have for firing a weapon or throwing a grenade and adding some events to them. So I can call a function on the base to say that it has taken damage. Getting animation events figured out, however, took me quite a while because there's multiple ways to edit the animations and there's events and notifies. I couldn't find a straight answer as to which one I needed and what did what. So it was yet another brute force approach until I got something that worked. So now, how the attacks work is that the enemy will start their attack, go through a delay, which is the length of the unit's attack rate, play the firing animation, and when that reaches the notify that I've created, the enemy will call a function on the base to say how much damage it took. It will then loop back to the beginning of the attack. All the base needs to do when it's damaged is to update the UI, when I actually make that, and then check if the base is destroyed. 
At this point, all it does is print out some text to say it's dead, but once implemented, it'll bring up the end screen and spawn some explosions to visually show it destroyed. The next feature to add is the gunman and turrets. Just like in Storm the House, the gunman won't actually be physical objects. They'll just be off screen and randomly kill enemies, which makes my job a whole lot easier as I don't have to sort out any models or animations. The gunman will work by having a collider that gets any enemy within a certain range, and every few seconds will just pick a target at random and deal some damage to. Very simple stuff. With each gunman, the rate of fire will go up, and the amount of enemies shot within each cycle would also increase. With the gunman, I'm going to aim for more of a Storm House 3 feel, as having hundreds of gunmen with the scaling would just mean that they fire at the enemies basically every tick, which just wouldn't be balanced. Now I've got the gunman working, I need a way to actually get them in the game. So it's time to make the shop. And this is my first time working with Unreal's UI implementation. So let's see how that goes. For the most part, I'm going to directly yoink the shop layout from Storm the House, as there's no real reason not to. So it's just a case of laying out all the buttons and panels out, as you can see here. Now I've got the buttons. I need to give them functions to call when pressed. So I'm going to make a shopping manager blueprint, which will have an event for each purchase and work as the middleman between the UI and the game. This was surprisingly easy to set up and now I already have a button that allows you to buy a gunman with a simple click. The weapon switching was the same, when the button is pressed the gun will become unlocked and set the player's active weapon. At the moment they don't have any stats linked to them but for now that looks great. And then the final part of the shopping experience is to actually earn money from killing enemies. So for this I simply need a function that's called when the enemy dies, which adds the enemy's bounty value to the shop's total amount. There may be a cleaner way to do this but for this case it works very nicely. So we've got the gameplay, we've got the shop. Now I just need a way to get from the gameplay to the shop. In Storm the House, there's a day cycle that you go through. So every few minutes, the spawning stops and the shop opens. So I just need a timer that counts down. And when it hits zero, trigger an event to end the day. And here is the final game. A somewhat faithful recreation of Storm the House made in Unreal Engine. Just remember this is my first ever game in Unreal. So I'm sure it's littered with bugs and errors. I'd be amazed if it even loads in the first place. But hopefully you enjoy it. And overall... How was my experience with Unreal Engine? Well, there are a lot of features and systems here that I really like. The visual scripting system of Blueprints is so intricate, but logical at the same time, and I really appreciate that. And it's great for beginners as an alternative to coding, as well as for more experienced developers, as it offers a lot of flexibility and structure, which means that depending on the project, you may never even need to code at all. I think my biggest issue with Unreal, and I know it's an issue that a lot of people have when they first start out, is the sheer complexity on offer. I especially felt this when I tried to implement the animations, where there's just so many different parts to a system and it can be hard to know which ones are needed at what time. Obviously this gets easier as my experience with the engine grows, but for now it's just very overwhelming and doesn't always seem like the best way to implement something. And while the documentation is very fleshed out, there can be a few things that seem contradictory, which can make grasping some concepts a bit difficult. But I'm very happy with the project I've created here. It looks and plays quite well, especially for a first go, and I hope you've enjoyed this process too. For my next project, I will be returning to Unity, which should feel very comforting after working with these engines I knew nothing about. So stick around for that one. Leave a like on this video. Let me know down below what your thoughts on this one, which engines you prefer and why. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.